Hey, Mike Pacelli here, coming to you from my studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and thanks for tuning in. For this lesson, I'll take a look at the genius of Paul McCartney guitar. Now, like the previous two lessons I did on the genius of John Lennon and the genius of George Harrison guitar, uh, I will focus on the Beatles music and one song from uh, Paul's solo records. Now, I know I use the term genius a little lightly, but I feel that the Beatles were such young men when they were creating this music. And yes, they were borrowing from a lot of other sources, but they made it their own in a way that, well, pop music had never heard. Um, initially, Paul was a guitar player in the Beatles. They had a bassist, Stuart Sutcliffe. When he left in 1961, Paul volunteered to be the bass player. Paul obviously had a affinity for guitar, though. Uh, he lists um, Carl Perkins, Chet Atkins, Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly as guitar influences. But uh, I think it's pretty evident by Paul's guitar work in the Beatles that uh, he was also a fan of, of uh, you know, Co Hoagie Carmichael and songs like Stardust and jazz chords in general. Um, they learned jazz chords uh, at a music shop they used to go to in Liverpool called Hesse's Music Shop uh, from a salesman there whose name was uh, Jim Gretty and he'd show them jazz chords, um, like the second chord in uh, Michelle, which is F seventh raise nine. So those kind of cool chords show up in a lot of the Beatles work and especially in Paul's guitar playing. So initially all we knew of the Beatles was Paul was a bass player. We saw him play bass on the Ed Sullivan show a couple times. Uh, every photo was Paul playing bass, guitar, and that's all we thought, Paul was the bass player. But uh, in 1965, after the Beatles had done a few of their rockers, uh, George introduces Paul and he steps up uh, with the uh, Epiphone uh, acoustic guitar and uh, he plays Yesterday. And uh, what a great song it was. So let's first take a look at that one. That, of course, is a condensed version of Yesterday. Um, the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan Show in uh, September of 1965. They did a few of their rockers, and then George introduces Paul, and he comes out, plays acoustic guitar. He was playing a 1964 Epiphone Texan, and uh, he does Yesterday by himself with, with a string quartet. Now, we all knew that Paul was the bass player. We saw him play his little Hofner bass many, many times and on the Sullivan Show in every photo, playing with a pick. And there he was, playing with his thumb and his fingers, playing acoustic guitar. What was really genius and of note was that it was sounding in the key of F, but you could see he was playing in the key of G, he was playing a G chord, and it sounded as an F. And what he had done, it, he tuned his guitar down the whole step. So his E note was a D note, and his B note was an A note. So everything was tuned down, which was really, really a great idea. And it was either because uh, he had said in some interviews that uh, G was too, too high for him to sing it in, so he wanted it to be in the key of F. And F is also a better key for string arrangements. So for whatever the reason, brilliant, that he did it in the, uh, the key of, uh, 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 played in the key of G, but it sounded in the key of, uh, of uh, F. And there's so many cool things about that. I mean, he basically just uses his thumb to play the bass notes, and he uses his first finger to play, play strum chords. A very simple but effective technique. So he's like, on the G chord, he's playing a G note, and then using his first finger. And then he goes through the chords, you know, G, F sharp minor, B7, E minor, and then playing a little bass note down. 
D, C, to D, G. On this one, I believe it's yesterday, he plays an E, e minor 7. Nice leading tone to the A7. Now on, on the bridge, F sharp, he just plays... When he gets to the B7, he kind of goes... Just not even with the, the third. You don't really hear the, the uh, D sharp. You just hear it. Right? Uh, and then this A minor chord is great because instead of playing at the normal first position, with the second finger on the E note and the third finger on the A note of the A minor chord, he reverses his fingers and it's the third finger on the E note and the second finger on the A note chord like that. The D, G. So cool. Um, and, and on now it looks as though they're here to stay. Instead of going which he's singing, he's just singing, he's just playing the G while he's singing that note. Here today. Which is so cool. Just, just absolutely wonderful. Another bit of brilliance off of the Help uh, album is a song called I've Just Seen a Face. The acoustic guitar work at the beginning is fabulous. Now, the song is in the key of A, but the song chordal structure starts off in F sharp minor, which is the relative minor of A. Uh, it goes from F sharp minor to D to E, and then the song starts see the face, right? Um, first, there's a little walk down on a 12 string guitar. It goes, right? And then he plays. And then to the E chord, landing on the fifth of E to the A. But what is really cool is the little uh, line that, that Paul plays on the acoustic guitar that, that, that goes up. And to me, it sounds like it's uh, based perhaps again on his uh, understanding of, of jazz chords or chord inversions, because it's F sharp minor, so it goes. What that implies is um, F sharp minor, first position, and a cool version of F sharp minor to get to second, comes off of that, to an F sharp minor seventh, and then F sharp uh, minor an octave higher. So he's playing the, uh, the intervals on the third and first string of those chords. Right? And then walk down uh, for the, the D, kind of a Chet Atkins thing now. Is that great? And then E, the 12 string walks down from D, uh, C sharp to B, playing the B, the, uh, the fifth of the E chord. The song starts in A. Right. Just, just great. Also on the Help album, there's uh, some great guitar playing on the song uh, "Another Girl" by Paul McCartney, and there's just a lot of little fills in it, but you could just tell it's so Paul. Uh, lines like, you know, you know, just basic uh, pentatonic shapes. And, and, and a very Paul thing, when he's on a note, say the seventh fret of uh, the second string, next note's probably going to be the seventh fret of the third string. He does that quite a bit, and I'll show you a little more later, but like... But probably his uh, most famous and, and, and really great guitar solo comes on uh, the Revolver album from uh, August 66, his solo on Taxman. George sings the song, but Paul takes the solo. And uh, he has some Indian influences in the solo in that 
when he does his hammer-ons and pull-offs, he uses the uh, uh, a major seventh on the way down and a dominant seventh on the way up. Uh, let me get a close-up of it for you, and then I'll talk about it. Is such a wonderful solo played by Paul McCartney. Um, in case you're wondering how I'm getting my tone, this is a Gibson uh, Midtown Kalamazoo and I'm playing through a uh, 1954 Gibson GA5 and I'm also using the uh, mini fuzz face, the red one. Uh, plus I'm using my uh, Pacelli V-Pick available at uh, vpick.com. So that's how we're getting the tone for this, uh, this lesson. Okay, that solo starts out with just a couple of octave Ds uh, on the fourth string and on the seventh fret of the third uh, string. And first he, he goes between the two strings. And once he gets that fourth string ringing out, he plays a couple of Ds again on the uh, third string, seventh fret, so. And then just basic uh, pentatonic stuff, you know. So. Octave D. It's the octave on the tenth fret of the first string. And a little flat five move, which is uh, you know, on the uh, ninth fret, right, uh, of the B string, slurred down to the eighth fret. So. more uh, D notes on the seventh fret and then these little hammer-on pull-offs that are kind of Indian sounding because the major third of D on the way down and he's gonna get the dominant seven uh, major seventh I should have said on the way down of D and on the way up he'll get the dominant seventh so it's so I'm starting on the seventh fret a little hammer slur to the sixth to the fourth back to the sixth on the G string and then six four two four same G string so that's the major third of D Ma major seventh of D sorry and then one more from four two open two and then up, up that's the fourth fret then the fifth fret which is that dominant seventh and then the fourth string d again so then again pentatonic stuff So the whole thing really slow. And I'm a tax man. Oh, it's so good. Of course was the uh, intro to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band and once again guitar played by Paul McCartney. Uh, I tried to do the rhythm and the lead together uh, but basically it's just over an A chord um, pentatonic starting on the third string um, fret 9 to the uh, second string fret uh, 8 to 10 you know. A repeats goes up to C chord and slid into everything. What I like
like is at the very end, though, which shows that he tuned his E string down to a D. Because the last note he plays is a D, and then you hear the low, which is a low D, A D. Just absolutely perfect. I, I can't imagine anything else at the beginning of that song. facsimile of the uh, solo in uh, Good Morning, Good Morning by Paul McCartney playing that solo off of uh, Sgt. Pepper's. And it's just, uh, you know, full of bravado and just reckless abandon. So I think it's impossible to play it exact. But, uh, you know, he starts off with a double stop on the 10th uh, fret of the 1st and 2nd string. It's a low A. 10th uh, fret of the B string. These little slurs that he does kind of like on Taxman. Just, you know, messing around with the notes from on the B string 10, 10 to 8 to 7 to 5 to 3 to 2. Second time, it's a little more in time. They sing da 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 da. Bends on B string, fifth fret. I mean, fifteenth fret. Sorry. Fifteenth fret of the B string to uh, twelve to fourteen of the G. And then that last just killer lick, which is like um, on the G string, fret nine to the B string, fret ten. And then bend fifteen of the first string. Just absolutely killing solo. In November of 1968, the Beatles released the White Album. A uh, lot of controversy about that record. Apparently the band wasn't getting along that well together. Um, and on some of these songs, it sounds like, uh, well, McCartney may have played all the parts. It sounds like uh, Paul playing drums on the next song I'm going to talk about. But it's noted that John overdubbed the snare drum. And I'm talking about back in the USSR. And you can tell there are some parts that George played. It's very George, and the part that goes. Those parts really sound like George. But the lead guitar solo in, ba in Back in the USSR is just most definitely a Paul type solo. And again, it's absolutely perfect. You can't imagine another solo. And uh, it goes like this. Um, So great. Um, fun when you're learning this, you know, you have to slide in every every uh, note on the 10th fret of the of the uh, E string. You can either do it with one finger. Uh, sometimes it's fun to go like slide with your third finger, your second finger, and your first finger. It'd be nice if I did it right. Or just all one finger. Now here's what I mean about what I was talking earlier where if he's on the 10th fret, he's probably going to be on the 10th fret of the second string too. So 10th fret, 10th fret of the second string. Very McCartney, right? And then this last little lick, very Paul. So it's on the B string, uh, 10 to 8, and then um, 9 to 5, right? 7, 8, 9, yeah. Get confused with the number of the frets. I'd like to talk briefly about another song off of the White Album, Blackbird. Now, I've already made a comprehensive study of that song, so if you'd like to really get an in-depth lesson, uh, just on the tube here, type my name in Blackbird and, and it'll come up. But um, 
you know, I've read that Paul said that the inspiration for it was, uh, you know, from Box Beret. Uh, you know, you know so, uh, how's it go, though? I don't hear any blackbird in that, but uh, inspiration comes from all sorts of places. But where I think the real genius is, uh, is in the chromatic line going up, where the song, the song goes to see. Part that goes. I mean, young guitar players back in the 60s weren't doing things like that. If we even could have came up with a line like that, we would have played You know, just kind of stay on the uh, fifth string and the second string, but to to keep it so uh, succinct, you know, instead of moving all around, we probably went. That's where the genius comes in, and and, I, and I'll say it again, the the lads just were were really really smart about how to make things. Uh, more concise and more musical and I mean having the chromatic line going instead of you know jumping around like you know like we would have done when we were kids and, and I grew up with some really great guitar players and we just weren't doing that so uh, again if you'd like a comprehensive lesson on, on Blackbird just type in Mike Pacelli and Blackbird and it'll come up I'd like to end this video with one more um, Paul McCartney guitar solo. It's off his uh, first solo record, McCartney, and it's the solo on um, Maybe I'm Amazed. I think it's one of the tastiest solos I've ever heard in my life, and, and even as a young man I was, I was just amazed by it, and, and I still uh, love it to this day. Uh, it goes like this. how he ends it, right? Off that C. <laughs> Just great. So tasty. It's over a B flat, you know, so you're thinking, kind of, again, pentatonic. So that's uh, starting on the G string, um, fret seven to B string, fret six to eight. Bend on the... Uh, Eighth. Right? Same phrase again. And once again, when he's on the fifth fret of the uh, B string, next note is going to be fifth fret of the G string. Right? Uh, finish it again. great slide on, on the uh, third string from fourth fret to open. Then on the third fret of the B string. And a great little on the G string, two to three. One of B to an F. Okay. Uh, fifth fret of the third string, bent up. Third fret. That's a little just, you know, still we're like in B flat seven. So uh, on the D string, uh, six to five. Um, fret eight of the fifth string. Back to five of the fourth. And then on C, just, just the notes of the C triad. A C chord, actually. Play it on the fifth string. Third fret. Fourth. On the fourth string, fifth fret, fifth fret, open, fifth fret of the second string, open, fifth string of the uh, first string, and then just, <laughs> what a great way to end the solo, right? <laughs> I just love that. Uh, maybe I'm amazed. I'm still amazed by just how perfect that solo is. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson on the genius of Paul McCartney's guitar. Uh, I think he's an amazing guitar player. I have a 
special fondness for Paul McCartney in general. You know, I got to meet him a couple times, which was such a thrill. And, um, you know, just it was really great to go back and listen to him uh, really intently to, to try to learn it again. I hope you enjoyed it. So um, if you'd like to drop me a line, you could do so uh, at MikePacelli.com. I try and answer every single email. So until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli, and uh, thanks very much for hanging out with me.